When night falls in Gelsenkirchen and everyone is asleep, Martin Althaus's shift begins. Are the animals well? Is everyone in their place? Is there anyone at the zoo who doesn't belong here? Are gates and doors securely locked? Martin Althaus sets off, senses sharpened. You never really know if someone is here or not. And you have to be absolutely aware of that as you walk through. Someone could be anywhere. So, you listen carefully to what's happening around you, because you can hear very well. Is someone walking around? You'll definitely notice. The first stop is always the social station. During the day, it's a gathering place for the animal keepers. At night, it's completely deserted. All right, let's take a look here. This is our handover book, as I like to call it. The issue, of course, is that I don't see the animal keepers and they don't see me. Though no one has written anything in for me, which means everything's okay. No special incidents to report. I've made my mark, and now I can start with my rounds. Let's turn on your light first. The red light is meant to prepare the zoo animals. Attention, someone is coming. Watchman and his dog. They have over 30 hectares of grounds ahead of them. Alaska, Africa, and Asia in miniature. All in one night. The first stop is the sea lion house. Hey, little one. Are you alone? All by yourself? Seems to be the case. All right, go to sleep then. Goodbye! Good night! Yes, sleep well. Yes, the sounds at night are really amazing. You hear all sorts of different noises. And during summer, they all lie up front here, just two meters away from you. It's pretty great when you walk by, chat with them a bit, and then just keep going. I do talk to the animals, simple as that. This way they know, okay, we recognize that voice. No problem, he belongs here. They don't have to be afraid and there's no added stress. That's really important. Right next door are the polar bears. Let's see how Antonia, Bill and Lara are doing. No rest even at night, the bear must be thinking. Obviously he doesn't feel like being lit up with a flashlight in the middle of the night. I mean, who would? When I'm in bed, I want to sleep too and I don't need that light. 900 animals and just one person. In case of emergency, Martin Althaus would call the keepers, the vet, or the police, depending on the situation. Luckily, he hasn't encountered any intruders nor escapees yet. I mean, it's pretty simple. If such a bear escaped just like that, he'd end up playing with you until you're done. He would simply overpower you. I haven't had that happen yet. And I don't really need that to happen either, though I am not particularly afraid or anything. Then again, fear is always a bad companion. Respect for situations is okay, that's one thing. But if you have fear, fear is always bad. A full moon and just a few steps away from a wolf pack. But even here, the watchman doesn't get goosebumps. The barrier between him and the predators is not just a fence, but also a water moat. What you hear over there is intentional. It's our so-called ice prevention system. This moat is there to keep the wolves from getting off the enclosure. And with these temperatures, there's a risk it would freeze over if the waters were still. This way, the pack stays at a safe distance. And Martin Althaus moves on, quite literally, into the lion's den, an even more dangerous companion than the wolves. And yet, even the king of the animals almost becomes a cuddly toy around Martin Althaus.
but only almost. The lion is very interested in the visitors that appeared in the middle of the night. Hey, hey, easy there. He just wants to play with you. The supposedly lovely lion is not a cuddly cat, after all. Luckily, there's a glass pane between them. She just doesn't understand that a lion could act differently. Yes, if we didn't have the glass between us, we'd have a problem, no question about it. So you simply step away and end the situation because it's not good for the dog, it's not good for the lions, and it's not something we want at all. For two years, Martin Althaus has been doing this job. Two years alone in the zoo, at night. Well, not completely alone. Many, many wild and tired animals. I mean, you choose this kind of work. I'm just not made for the factory. I need my peace and quiet. I don't need anyone talking to me constantly. It's nice to be able to walk around here at night and just have my tranquility. His wife has no problem with his work. She also works at the zoo as an animal keeper. Martin Althaus has a special relationship with some of the animals too. This one right here he finds really cool. And there's Helmut lying up front. Helmut is the big one over there. You can tell by his size that he's quite a hefty fellow. Helmet weighs around 100 kilos. Two years ago, he could no longer support his own weight. The tortoise ended up with shoulder problems. And then someone from a company that builds orthotics offered their help. Helmet was fitted with one, and he did exercises because he couldn't walk properly. And now everything is back to normal. At the end of their shift, Martin Althaus and Tom have covered 16 kilometers, crisscrossing through the zoo. When the night ends and humans and animals wake up again, these two finally get to call it a day.